Alrighty, folks, as per request, uh, I'm going to show you how to get this uh, DSP system, whatever you want to call it, running on the native front end of any Superhet, and in this particular case, it's Nikon 7300. So uh, it's very similar to what I was doing before, but these plugins are far superior to what I was using before with the Bertom and the other system. Uh, it did work well. Uh, this one is a little touchy. Uh, I figured I'd just throw this out there. You guys can play with this. I'm still working on it, but I'll show you how to patch it up and get it running, okay? So uh, what you got right here, what you're going to need is a 3.5 mil to go into the headphone out of the 7300, and the cable comes over, and it goes into input two right here of your sound card. Okay, you can see the light flashing. Uh, I'm, I, do, I am on a station, and it's receiving right now. So um, uh, that's, that's it. Now, what I would do is I would connect only the tip of this connection. And this comes over to a quarter inch, like this, TS tip sleeve, and bring just the tip of this connector to the tip of this connector. Don't cross, don't uh, short the left and right together, okay? Probably not a good idea. So you need a, a 3.5 TRS tip ring sleeve to go in here, tip and shield connected only to a tip and shield mono quarter inch tip sleeve. Goes into the input of your preamp, okay? Now we'll jump over to We'll jump over to Cakewalk, and uh, the CWP file, and this will include the transmit profile as well. Uh, so if you're not using Cakewalk or, or the DAW to process your TX audio, then you can just go ahead and disable that, just mute it. Um, so what you would do is you would go in and just mute this channel. Okay, it's right there. Just click mute, and that will take that, uh, disable that whole thing. It'll mute it out. All right. This is just for the RX side. So uh, what you want to do is uh, you want to make, make sure your outputs are set correctly, whatever sound card you're using. So I'll revisit this, go into edit, preferences, and you want to make sure the selection under devices is the appropriate sound card in and out. Once that's done, then what you're going to want to do, and this will come off pre-configured. So uh, you want to set this, make sure this is on analog 2. In other words, the second input of your sound card. Pan this all, and this probably will already be panned. Okay, make sure that's panned all the way over to the right. Let's go to microphone. If you are using the DAW, this is panned all the way over to the left. These buttons should be in stereo right here, in interleave stereo for both of these. And so what's going to happen is uh, your master you set in the middle, of course, as usual. What's going to happen is your RX audio is going to be spit out of the back of your sound card. It will also come out your headphones, so you'll be able to use your headphones in it. Okay, this is your primary interface card. This is where all your audio is flowing out of. It's, not, it's no longer going to come out of the transceiver. So this will all be coming out of the card. So what you want to do is you want to plug the speakers, plug your speakers in, if you're going to use speakers, into the back of that card on the same output. So if your 7300 or your conventional rig is panned over to the right, you, you want to come out the right out of the back of that sound card to your speakers because you don't want microphone audio in there if you're using the mic, uh, if you're using the DAW for TX, for your TX audio. You don't want that coming through your speakers because you, you'll end up with a loop. So you want to come out the right, and you want to basically, it's going to come out in mono. So you'll need to come up with a way to double feed the speakers both left and right. And a splitter will do that. Let me see if I can grab some. 
So you can make one up using a quarter inch cable and just make up a couple pigtails if your speakers connect via RCA or um, quarter inch or whatever. Let me get over to the camera here. So what you can use is something like this. Or you can build one, just build a cable with a quarter inch plug, goes into the back of the card and it comes out, splits it, and it comes out to two outputs to feed both both your speakers. If you're using, you know, uh, a stereo setup on speakers, if you're not, you're just using just a single monitor, then no, you won't need this, okay? Now let's get back to the rack. So right here, you're going to have the plug-ins. So you've got this plug-in, which is the reaper part of the reaper package rea plugs this is called reefer and the mode should be subtract and what you're going to have to do is you see this gray line right here that's your noise floor and then the yellow lines the waveforms coming up are the actual audio that's coming out of the front of the 7300 now this is the noise reduction algorithm all right and you're going to need to you're going to need to play with this Chances are, if you're running a 7300, score. Uh, you should be okay, and you should be able to just light this up, and I'll show you what to play with on the front of the radio to make this kind of work. All right? But it's going to take some time, so be patient. Uh, the second plug-in down is, is the gate. So when the signal drops a, below a certain threshold, and this gate is dependent on frequencies. So all of the white dots, and same with the noise reduction, the gate is depending on frequencies, which makes, that's what makes this so powerful. So it's technically what you'd call a multiband gate. And if we go back to the noise reduction, this is a multiband noise reduction. So it targets specific frequencies. So that's how that works. You'll see the bottom scale, same for both of these plugins. You'll see 50 hertz all the way to, oh, 20 kilohertz. It's 20 to 20, but the way I have this set up, and this is how I would advise it to, for you to do is that you want to set your bandwidth here from low to high for what the radio can hear. So the maximum bandwidth that the radio can receive at is 3.6 kilohertz. So I have this set. If you look at this number that popped up, see it pops up when I hover over this dot. This is around 3,500 hertz. So I can drag this a little bit more. That's 37. Eh, 3597, close enough for government work. Okay, so how this works, you'll figure it out, is that if you raise these up, it will prevent these frequencies from coming through. Okay, here's the other setting right here. This is an important setting. So this is your FFT size, and this will affect how the plugin behaves and how much artifacting you hear. You're going to have to find a happy medium in here. You click on this. You will see a whole mess of different settings. Don't be afraid to play with that. Same with the gate. So if I open the gate, now this is your gate threshold. Okay. And also FTC, F FFT size on this. This will affect uh, what happens with it. All right. You'll notice that the FFT sizes were different. I found this to be kind of a good area kind of park it in. Okay, there's now to make all this work, let me get back over to the camera. It's actually very simple. It's just going to take you a, a little bit to put it together, to, you know, to um, uh, get it manipulated to the point where it works well for you. So let's go back over here. So let's see this. Camera adjusted for you. Focused on the 7300. Okay, so you see, you can't really see the knobs too good, but this is the volume knob. This is the RF gain. So if you look, you can see the white lines. You can see where my RF gain is. You want this RF gain rolled way back. Way back. You, probably, you may not, on weaker signals, you won't ever see your um, uh, S meter move. Don't worry about that. Um, this is your volume control, of course. So you want to work with the volume control and the RF gain in t together 
because you want to you want to bring the noise floor down to a point and just have the audio coming through. That's what makes this work. Uh, that's how it works on the Sun. So if you go back over here, you'll see this green light flicker. See that green light? That's the input. So remember, the signal comes out of the front of your radio and goes over to input two of the sound card. Well, you have a gain adjustment there, so you're going to need to set that gain appropriately. Um, to make the system work, and I'll demo it quick for you, uh, pretty much the only thing you may have to touch is either the RF gain or this volume control. That's the goal. That's the goal. You don't want it too complicated. All right, so we'll back up here. Actually, I'm going to leave the camera probably right there so you can see everything if I have to go back to it. So let's go back over to this, and then we'll bring the audio online. I'm going to have to listen to the audio. So uh, let me get my headphones plugged in. Okay, so we're just going to play with it now uh, and see what happens. So actually what I'm going to do, let me get the camera. Let me get the camera on the screen as well. This will help. Let's do... Uh, Let's try this hardware. Okay, so that's good. We can take this so you can see what I'm doing with the knobs at the same time. Okay, so I'll get the audio back online. Here we go. And we'll just we'll just play with it and see what we can do with it. Oh, and hot. And uh, very basic. And uh, covering up those holes on the side of the MC60, uh, really, uh, he benefited uh, from it. But, uh, you know, I, uh, I don't think, uh, you know, it's necessary on the, uh, on the uh, Electro Voice mics. So... No, no. Um, yeah, the, the, and, and uh, Lee, Lee's voice is not bassy, so he wouldn't need that. I don't even have a voice, so there. See, he sounds great. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with Lee's voice. It's hey, going to natural, actually. We're going to bypass it? Like what my doctor said this morning, said I was coughing. So I'm going to kick this out. Here we go. <laughs> no, the the voice is quite natural the way it is right now. I'll tell her next time to take, take you out to dinner. Engaged uh, again? Well, no, that's just costing her more money. I don't need much. Could you, could you use a new car? Yeah. I got a new radio. Negative. So I can probably bring this they down a little bit. The car. They can, yeah. I can't wait to see what the uh, the two meter board is going to cost to plug in the K four. I can um, uh, something like seven hundred. I'm figuring around the 200 mark. A bypass? Nothing's off 200. I'm, I'm going to say about uh, Engage? around like 375 plus, uh, you know, $122 uh, shipping from uh, uh, California. Plus 300 hours tax. You can buy a separate one for that. You know, I was just thinking that, Bill. You know, if you had to spend seven hundred, eight hundred dollars on a on a plug-in board, why not, why not go out and buy a radio and put the chains in your pocket? Yeah, and get one with half decent indentation while you're at it. Oh, at <laughs> you know, 
I, I, I laugh when you bring that up, but um, you know, I, that to me, that really bothered me. But uh, I'm still, I'm laughing about it. That radio, I had it, you know, running and connected to an antenna. That radio actually changed memory channel uh, because the detent wasn't strong enough to hold it uh, on the channel that I had set it up. And if I was in a, D a VFO mode, it would have changed frequency. So, uh, you know, that, that leaves a little bit to be desired. Which radio was that? Oh, this is a Yesu radio. And uh, I sent it back to DX Engineering, and they replaced it with a brand new one. I think the brand new one was even worse than the one I sent them back. So I took the new one, and I sent it all the way to Yesu. <clears throat> and uh, Yesu uh, said there was no problem with it. I don't think they even uh, plugged it in, turned it on. I think they just uh, spun the knob and said it's so you can see that, yes, it does do stuff to the audio. Um, doesn't work as well on here as it does on the Sun, but it does work pretty flipping good. Uh, you'll notice that I have an EQ placed in at the end of it to try and correct some of it, and I haven't worked with it too much. But um, you can use this to ramp ramp up the uh, top end a little bit on your audio without affecting the noise reduction. This is post noise reduction. So, you know, we can maybe even work to get it to warm it up a little bit. You know, let me get the audio back on here. Need an update, Roger, on the K4. Uh, the update is I, I they finally went away from the beta version of the uh, up upgrade. And I downloaded the upgrade, and I am, uh, you know, getting ready to uh, play with the uh, with the transmit uh, equalizers. And uh, now Bill has told me that they're still having problems with them. So, uh, you know, uh, that's the update. So you're uh, you're back on your seventy six ten. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Over. Well, nothing wrong with that audio. Well, thank you very much. I guess it'll be around for a while. I still have one upstairs on the nightstand. <laughs> you know, I uh, when I first heard about that, I said, boy, that's interesting. Well, I used to have a 7300 up there, but, you know, after we sold the cabin and, you know, and everything else, I, I, I thought it would be nice to have a radio up there so I didn't have to roll out of bed. There you go. Uh, yep. I so as you can see on the stronger signals, it's incredibly effective. Uh, very, very good. Jazz is pretty freaking strong. So um, uh, there's one thing I wanted to point out to you guys. So let's say you've got some heavy QRM and a station. Let's say you're at 3 kilohertz, which is right here, right? And you've got a station up here that's blowing into the passband. Now you can use this as a notch filter as well. Sorry about bumping the uh, microphone there, or the, the camera. Uh, you can use this as a, as a manual notch filter uh, to brick wall the sides. Like when you, when, obviously, you know, common sense will tell you if you take this, and you bring this like, let's say uh, they're blowing in, you can take this and bring this up like this. Well, it will shut down any of the audio trying to come into the passband there. So it kind of has a, a dual purpose. I, ha I haven't used it in, a, in an event, obviously, yet, but I bet it would work gangbusters on an event really, really well. And it does tighten up the front end of the 7300 because we all know that these things are barn doors. Uh, they do not have adequate filtering to prevent strong uh, adjacent signals from blowing into the passband. So this will help tremendously. I'll get the audio back. In. The segment they, they covered his uh, two shows.
Okay, that's in bypass, and I'll bring the the uh, uh, chain back in. Here we go. About 25 years, his uh, junior, um, and it uh, covered, uh, you know, a, a couple other things. They they had uh, Tony in the uh, in this segment. They had the caregiver. They had Lady Gaga in this 20-minute uh, segment. It was very interesting, and um, a couple of things I learned was number one. Uh, supposedly, Tony made a few mistakes while on the stage at uh, Radio City. I watched that program at Radio City twice. I didn't see any mistakes. Of course, maybe I wasn't looking for them. And the other thing that uh, that uh, that really caught my ear uh, last night on the program was um, Lady Gaga said that, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, Tony Bennett uh, really never referred to her, you know, when the two of them were together, never called her by her name, uh, you know, never used her name, Lady Gaga. But uh, in Radio City, when she walked out on the stage, uh, Tony Tony said Lady Gaga, and uh, uh, Lady Gaga was, uh, you know, uh, caught off guard by the fact that that's the first time Tony had used her name. He remembered her name. And uh, she said she had trouble keeping composure, uh, you know, because uh, this is the first time he uh, used her name, uh, you know, in a long time. So it was a really good show last night. And unfortunately, I think that's going to be the last show until he passes away then 60 Minutes will probably do one final, uh, you know, like 30-minute uh, review, and uh, that, that'll that be it. KW2Q. Yeah, I saw that show you're talking about, Rod. I watched the uh, the whole thing uh, when they aired it. <clears throat> she said she had a hard time. Uh, I watched her I watched her in a uh, in an interview after that concert, and she said she had a hard time not crying. Hey, Roger. Call. I'll be back. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Brian. Uh, okay, so uh, you saw an interview, and she made that comment uh, uh, in the interview that, um, that uh, you know, she was caught off guard when he called her by her name. Yeah, she actually, uh, she cried during the interview because she couldn't hold it back, but she said she had a hard time uh, during the show because it was uh, so touching. Well, you know, Bill, I really uh, didn't, uh, I never formed an opinion on Lady Gaga. Uh, the, the name str uh, struck me as being, uh, you know, a, a little offbeat, and, but I never really, you know, paid attention to her uh, until, uh, until I saw her, you know, in that show at Radio City. And my whole opinion was all positive after that show. Yeah, she's a very smart, uh, very, very deep individual. And um, she puts on this real show for entertainment, but that's not who she is, really. And I agree with you. Uh, after watching that show and a couple of the, you know, uh, the 60-minute uh, pieces with her in it, uh, uh, you know, I agree with that. So there you go. Uh, go ahead, Chaz. Yeah, well, we have uh, access here to some old-time TV shows on Comcast. And one of the shows, of course, is the old Ed, Ed Sullivan show. And yesterday uh, or the day before, I uh, I saw a clip. It's a half-an-hour show, and I saw a clip of Tony Bennett singing when he was a young man, probably in his 30s or 40s. Actually, I think he got uh, he got better as he got older. But he still could sing uh, when he was a young man. He had a big band there, and uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, he's, still, he's still hanging in there. Yeah, he's one of those performers that had his own, his own sound, and uh, it's an unmistakable sound, right? Chaz, did you get to see the show at Radio City? Absolutely. Uh, I don't know if I saw both of them. I knew there were two of them. But after after you mentioned it a few weeks back, I uh, 
I went back on On Demand, and I was able to see the whole thing complete. Okay. CBS did air it twice, about a week or two apart, and I watched both of the shows, uh, you know, uh, when uh, CBS put them on. But um, I really, really thought that he did uh, a really great job. And uh, when they said that he made a couple of mistakes, I, 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 that caught me by surprise because uh, I didn't see him. Well, if, they, if they were, if there were some mistakes, I think they're being overcritical. I, I think not only did he do a good job, but she's a, uh, she's a smart lady, a lot smarter than a lot of people give her credit for. And I think that she was ready in case. Something happened, and Tony, um, you know, uh, some, Tony didn't recognize something, or uh, you know, he was, you know, something went wrong. I think she was ready to, to, uh, you know, keep the show going, but I don't think that was necessary. Other than the fact that he did hold on to the edge of the piano, and uh, you know, and I think that was smart, so he didn't have a trip or fall. He sounded damn good. And I noticed that, uh, you know, about piano, and that didn't bother me at all. I, uh, and I felt the same way about it to, uh, that you did. But uh, I was very surprised when, when uh, they said on the show last night that there were a couple of mistakes. I guess I was just so wrapped up in the show, I, I missed the mistakes, and uh, that's a good thing. Yeah, did, did I fade out uh, on you? No, no, you're doing a good job. Hey, you're good down here too, Bill. I think uh, the thing that struck me the most uh, during uh, people that were talking about uh, Tony Bennett uh, um, was saying, who people who knew him well were saying that when he's not on stage, he can't even remember his name. He doesn't know where he is. He doesn't know this, doesn't know that, doesn't know anybody around him hardly. But as soon as he gets on stage, all of a sudden his memory kicks back in and he becomes an entirely different person. And they said they just could not believe how he can switch it on and off. Well, they showed that, Bill, in um, his New York City apartment. Um, and they, they somebody was playing the piano there. And, uh, you know, started playing one of his songs, and he kicked right in. Okay. So, uh, that concludes this. I just wanted to show you uh, what's going on here. Uh, workable. You want to play with it, it's free. I'll have uh, the information up on the website by this afternoon. 7-3-ALF. We'll catch you later. A1GMM.